Hey guys, today we have a, a follow-up problem uh, that is somewhat contrary to the inelastic coalition. Uh, collision here. There we go. I always say coalition, but it's collision. So, um, in the previous problem, we did an inelastic collision problem, uh, but in this uh, problem, or this time in this video, we're going to be doing an elastic collision problem. So let's say that we have a wall. Let's say that this is our wall. And let's say that we throw a ball onto this wall. And this, let's say it's a rubber ball. And this rubber ball, once we throw it onto this wall, it bounces back with the same velocity. So we have this ball bouncing back, a rubber ball bouncing back with the same velocity. So we can say that this is V1 and that this is V2. Uh, and let's give some let's let's put some numbers here. Let's say that this uh, rubber ball, uh, let's say that its mass is 58 grams. Uh, let's say that its velocity one or initial velocity is 40 meters per second, right? And let's say that the time it took us, uh, or the, let's say that the time that it took for this event to happen is 15 milliseconds. And we know we said that V1 is equal to V2. Uh, let me change that. We said that V1 is equal to V2. So we said that the initial velocity uh, was equal to the velocity uh, as this ball comes back. So the velocity uh, towards the, the wall is going to be equal to the velocity once the ball bounces back. So now let's get into our work uh, because we're interested in finding uh, so we can say find the force the wall exerts on the ball. So how do we go about doing that? Well, again, we have to take into consideration our uh, impulse formula. We know that that was our uh, average force equals to the change in momentum over the change of time. And we can rewrite that as momentum 2 minus momentum 1 equals time 2 minus time 1. So again, let's, let's get right into it. So first we're going to do the momentum 1, P1. P1, so here we're looking at this path. So we're looking at the ball going in this direction, the rubber ball going in that direction. So we know that P1 is going to be mass times velocity in that direction. So we can say that that implies uh, the following once we put the numbers in. We have to convert the 58 grams here to kilograms, and uh, that is 0 0.058 kilograms times the velocity. Velocity was 40 meters per second. Uh, once we calculate that, that should give us around 2.30, yeah, that's correct, 2.32 uh, kilograms meters per second. That is our momentum before um, uh, this ball hits the, the wall. So this is the momentum as this ball hits the wall. Uh, with momentum uh, prior to, to the coalition. Now we're, we want to know momentum too. Well, we want to know the momentum too. If we said that their velocities are equal, we're going to know, we're, we're going to know that uh, is equal, but you know, opposite direction. So because it's traveling um, the opposite direction this time, so it's going to be traveling this way. But we'll do it. We'll do it just for the sake of it. So, uh, and here I actually I uh, want to say that uh, it's again M2, V2, or this would be M1, actually, M1. And that will imply the following. We got 0 0.058 kilograms. And the direction, the velocity is going in the, ne the negative direction now. So we can say that it's minus 40. So we'll get the same answer, but uh, just the negative 2.32 kilograms meters per second and now we have p1 and p2 so uh, 
uh, we can actually go back to this equation. Uh, we can plug in these two values there. So let's do that. So we have our force. Our average force is going to be equal to P2, which was minus 2.32 minus our P1, 2.32 over our changing uh, time and our changing time was just uh, the 15 uh, so we can write that as zero as point zero point one five uh, um, seconds minus zero at t1 and that should give us uh, minus four point sixty four over 0 0.015 seconds and again this is uh, kilograms meters per second so this is seconds right there seconds uh, oops sorry I had already written the seconds there sorry about that so this is a this right here is a it's a seconds so I'm gonna write second this is kilograms meters per second once we divide that that should give us uh, minus 309 newtons. Our answer is in newtons because we're looking for force. So we know that this wall applied a force of minus 300. So that should be uh, equals to minus. Oops, let me write that again. Sorry about that. So we know that this wall is applying a force of minus 309 newtons as this ball hits this wall so we also know because forces are equal and opposite that this ball that this ball here is hitting this wall with 309 newtons of force thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video